What's up, everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every week. You don't want to miss these videos. Today, I have a very special guest who's going to tell us all about the field of emergency medicine, as well as uh, being a, a, an attorney, uh, and tell us how she got to this point and some tips for you guys. I would like to welcome Dr. Uh, Bailey. How, how are you doing tonight? Good, good. Thank you, Dr. Webb, so much for having me tonight. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself for the uh, followers who uh, may not know who you are. So I'm Regina Bailey. I'm an emergency medicine doctor um, here in Houston, Texas. Okay. And um, going back uh, to when you first started, picked out emergency medicine, why did you choose uh, emergency medicine? What, what was it about it that uh, kind of uh, was um, appeasing to you? It actually wasn't my first choice. And um all, ever since I was four years old, I wanted to be a pediatrician. So all growing up, I wanted to be a pediatrician. Um, then when I went to med school, um, I kind of fell, fell in love with uh, surgery. So then I decided I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, I applied through the match, match uh, general surgery categorical um, here in uh, Houston, Texas. And um, I started um, internship, and um, I was miserable. The lifestyle was just hard on me. This was a second career for me. Um, so doing um, general surgery residency in my late 30s, um, just took a toll on me and just it changed my personality. I was, wasn't happy. Um, so I took a break from that, kind of reevaluated things and um, kind of fell into emergency medicine and, and grew to love it. It's a perfect match for me now. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, you spoke about briefly about your uh, previous career. I understand that you were a lawyer before. Uh, I saw that in D.C. Can you tell us yes. about that and how did you transition into medicine? Um, well, I, again, as I said, um, ever since I was a kid, my mom, my um, grandma was a nurse, and just see, hearing her talk about her stories, taking care of patients, always had um, piqued my curiosity um, for medicine and interest in medicine. So I always wanted to be a pediatrician growing up. I majored in microbiology, my, minor in chemistry at Hampton University. Mm -hmm. um, applied, you know, the trad traditional route when everybody does their senior year of college. And apparently, the year I applied was like the year they had the most applicants ever, and I was waitlisted everywhere I apply. Um, at that point, I did research at NIH for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, applied again, um, didn't, didn't, have, didn't have the greatest MCAT scores, but I applied with them anyway, um, was waitlisted again. Um, and then at that point, my mom was like, uh, why don't you go to law school? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I knew it in my heart it really wasn't for me, but kind of uh, applied, trying to kind of get her off my back. And I thought it was kind of going to be like med school and I wasn't going to get in. So I kind of uh, didn't take too much care in, in applying and I ended up... Uh, Apply, uh, getting accepted to every law school um, I applied to. So then I was like, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> yeah. So I ended up, uh, I said, let me go try. It really can't be that bad. So I ended up going to law school at Georgetown. I was like, it's an amazing yeah. institution. It's great. Um, knew from the first day, I said I knew it wasn't for me. Um, but I said, let me, you know, go through it, finish it, you know, see what I can do. Um, I, in law school, I pretty much took every different kind of class you could think of that uh, wasn't the tr traditional law kind of class. I took a lot of health law classes, medical law, patent law. And um, because of my science background, a lot of patent firms recruited me to work for their law firm. So I was a patent lawyer in DC for three years. Um, very lucrative career, but I was bored out of my mind. I still had my passion. I had to be a doctor. That's what I really wanted. So I was like, okay, I gave the law thing a chance. Um, it was lucrative. I had you know very prestigious career in DC, but I was like, let me try one more time. So I applied. Um, this time I got in. <laughs> Ended up going to um, med school at George Washington, and from the first day, I realized I finally found um, my passion, and I knew that's I made the right decision at that point. Okay, and do you still currently practice law, or just strictly medicine at this point? I don't practice law, but I keep my licenses active. I'm licensed in um, Texas and D.C., and I do a lot of uh, writing on the side, and a lot of consulting and writing on the side, so I still use it. It comes in handy. Okay, and some people, they always talk about law school versus medical school, and for the student, students out there, what are your thoughts on which one was harder, law school or medical school, or were they kind of com comparable? They're, they're totally different. Law school was a lot of reading and a lot of, um, a lot of talking and arguing, which is not my personality. <laughs> um, med school, to me, was a lot more memorizing, but it was a lot more of what I was interested in, so I was always interested in reading it. So it was more, I wanted to learn about it more than I did with the law, so that's why it worked for me. Okay. And currently, I think long term wise, med school is a lot harder than law school. Gotcha. And currently, you work as a medical director out in Houston. Yes. Okay. And 
what is a typical day for you? It kind of starts at what time? It kind of ends at what time? It, it's maybe your schedule is a little bit different from someone who is strictly as an EM physician, but um, yes. a more uh, managerial uh, role or how does that work? Well, just in general, emergency medicine is kind of different than um, traditional medicine. You, um, it's shift work. Yeah. Um, so you um, work shifts and then once you leave the ER, you don't have to worry about, you know, you have your worries about your patients, but you don't have people calling you or paging you. You don't carry a page. It's just a little different from being a surgeon or internal medicine doctor. Yeah. Um, and also gives a lot more flexibility in, um, with lifestyle. So if you're someone that has a lot of hobbies, um, likes to travel a lot, emergency medicine is great because you can plan out your schedule um, based on when you what you want to do in your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, for me, I now work 24-hour shifts. Um, so I work one to two 24-hour shifts a week. Um, I go in uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm pretty much taking take care of whatever comes in the emergency department. Um, I currently work in a freestanding emergency department, which yeah. is very popular in Texas. They're so... But the population is so large. Um, the hospitals have an emergency room having problems taking care of patients. They've built a lot of freestanding emergency departments throughout um, the suburbs and the other areas to try to treat patients that might not need the hosp actual hospital setting. Um, so pretty much we take care of patients in the emergency room from birth um, to death, all ages, whatever comes in. Um, the acuity in a freestanding emergency department is usually a little less because we don't receive ambulance traffic. Mm -hmm. um, but when I did work in the traditional hospital ERs, that's when you get um, the ambulances coming in with the stab wounds, the gunshot wounds, um, the people having um, heart attacks, strokes, um, more of the higher acuity things come through the traditional ER, which I did before. Um, so it's just a little bit different now. Okay. So yeah. really, there's no typical day in emergency medicine. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never heard of the 24-hour um kind of uh, shift that that's that's pretty awesome that you can just do that and get your hours get it over with yeah exactly yeah. so I, I guess that's uh, really good at uh, emergency medicine is very flexible would you say in terms it is of it's really flexible yeah for when I um I have a five-year-old daughter but when she was little I used to work just nights um, and pretty much I would put her to sleep my mom was taking care of her at the time I'd put her to sleep um go to work and by the time I'd come home from the night shift um she was just getting up so she pretty much didn't miss me being there so it's kind of like mommy was always there so it was good in, in some respects that I could figure out what was good around her schedule. And now that she's older and has more activities, now I'm, I'm you know, do one 24-hour shift or two a week, and I still have time to make it to her cheerleading practice and swim class and all that. So it makes gives me a little more flexibility with life now. Got you. And a lot of students ask about that as well, being a not only a single mother but a parent in medicine. What are your thoughts? Is it pretty doable to be a parent and be a, a, a physician, lawyer, and everything else that you do? It's, it's hard, but it's definitely doable. I've had a couple of times where um, I've relied on nannies and, you know, things fall through. They have family emergencies or I've had a nanny that quit last minute with no notice. So there are times when my daughter has stayed the night with me in the emergency room, you know, and stayed in the office with me. She's so used to it now. She actually loves coming to work with me. It's not very often, but emergencies, you know, I do have to sometimes bring her to work. So um, it, it's difficult, but you can make it work. And in the long run, it's worth it in the long run. Okay. Um, what advice to, would you have to someone who is interested in the field of medicine or specifically uh, emergency medicine? What, what advice would you give them? I would say um, if they can to find a mentor, especially now with the internet, you can find mentors on the on internet that would um, be interested in talking to you, giving you advice. Um, I would also let them know there are going to be a lot of people that, there may be a lot of people in life that are going to be negative to them and tell them, hey, you can't do this. Why are you doing this? It's too hard. I personally had so many people, even family members tell me, hey, just give up. You know, you apply this many times. Why do you keep trying? Why do you keep going to med school? If it's something you truly want in your heart, don't give up. Yeah. Um, keep trying. Try to ignore the negative people and just go to it towards that goal of being a doctor. Yeah, that's really inspiring to hear because I have a lot of students who uh, applied to medical school and they just are completely floored when they get that first rejection. Or, oh, it's you know, devastating, yeah. yeah it's very, it is very devastating. It, it was for me as well. Uh, so that, that's very inspiring to hear that, you know, you can um, – repeatedly apply year after year and you know basically if you want to become a doctor you you have to basically never give up exactly or you're just gonna it's always gonna mean that back of your head I mean you know what could have happened what could have happened literally it took me five times to apply to get into medical school and then once I got in I never had a problem with passing my USMLE steps or anything yeah. so it's not a question of whether you can do the work it's more a question of you know doing the right things for the application and actually just getting your foot in the door which sometimes just takes a while to to figure out the system and work the system to get in there. Sometimes it takes um, doing research or finding the right mentor. Um, sometimes it takes just applying to enough medical schools to get your 
your chances out there. Like a couple of times I only played, applied to like three or four um, med schools, you know, that they are, it's hard to get in when you're not applying to many places. You have more options if you apply to more places. So just, yeah. if you're not, if you don't get in the first time or second time, just reevaluate what you did, what you did and what you didn't do right and try to change things to make it better and make your application better the next time. Got you. And you mentioned that you got accepted to all of the lawsuits that you applied to and really for the first couple of years, none of the medical schools. Well, why do you think that was? Um, I think the MCATs were um, a problem. Um, also, um, I know a couple of times I made it to the interviews and um, the um, admission coordinators would tell me, well, um, your um, institution that you went to sent your recommendations like at the tail end or right before them when they were oh. due. So at that time, that was a lot of difficulty, too, getting things done on time. This was in the 90s, so things were a little different. Now things with the Internet are a little more, a little quicker. So definitely timing this, getting your applications in early, um, doing well in the MCAT, um, and applying to enough schools, applying to, to more than just a couple, a handful. you got to do broadly. You might have to step out of the bound. You know, If you want to stay in a specific state, you might have to consider going to a different state. And also researching places that have uh, minority programs or very receptive to minorities or have some kind of more recruitment uh, programs that might be more helpful to you. And that's all be help also will be helpful when you actually attend that school if you have a support system. So it's good to kind of look for those kind of programs there. Gotcha. And, and speaking of ter in terms of things outside of medicine that you do, and I'm, I'm completely just amazed by how much you do outside of medicine. A lot of students ask me, is it possible to do all the, a lot of things that they want to do in terms of business, in terms of fitness? Uh, I understand you were NFL cheerleader before. Yes. Uh, was that before law school? That was during law school, actually. Oh, during law school, really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Uh, you, you've uh, authored several books, and you have yes. your own product line. Can, can you speak about some of the things you do outside of medicine? Yes. Um, actually, like um, when I first became medical director, when I changed jobs, I was doing more desk work. Uh -huh. and I started eating like crazy, eating like fast food, not eating healthy. I gained a lot of weight real fast. Um, and then around the same time, um, and I just felt horrible. I was sluggish, wasn't feeling well. Same time, my mom passed away from complications of diabetes, kidney failure, heart, you know, hypertension. Mm -hmm. So it was a wake-up call to me, hey, I need to lose weight, get in shape, change my life around. So that's when I started looking into nutrition, um, losing the weight, becoming more healthy, exercising. And I started competing in fitness contests. And then when I posted on Facebook my before and after pictures, a lot of women contacted me. They're like, wow, you work these 24-hour shifts, you have this busy lifestyle, you're a single mom, but you're able to commit to becoming healthy. You know, I had, they would tell me, hey, I have no excuses anymore. If you can do it, I can do it. So I felt, um, they told me how much I motivated them. So that prompted me to start um, my um, company, Fit and Fine in No Time, which has a line of different nutritional supplements that help you lose weight and stay healthy. Um, so that's what all that motivated uh, me to do that. Um, and then with you know, getting with the emergency medicine schedule, I had the flexibility of spending time working on my business um, and doing public speaking and writing books and, and keeping my op options open. It's very important in medicine, to, um, which I figured out. They don't teach this in medicine, but it's good to know. Um, uh, have some kind of a side hustle. Yeah, um, yeah. Have something that you like that you can always um, make some extra money on the side. Yeah. Um, and it makes you more marketable. It makes you more interesting to you. Whatever it is you're interested in, try to find a way to to make money off of it. It's good to have an extra source of income. So you're not always relying on a hospital to make your money from. Um, and also a learning experience through that, I decided to start my own med spa. Um, so I wow. recently opened a med spa too. Awesome. Um, so uh, again, it's good to import, it's good to um, learn the business side of medicine too. So you're not always um, uh, relying on somebody else to make income. You can learn to make your own business, make your own income um, through medicine and through also your, your side uh, interests as well. Got you. And speaking about writing books, I know one of your books is about the medical school interview process. Yes. Uh, I have a lot of students who are uh, pre-med or entering medical school, and it's probably helpful when you apply to residency and beyond. Can you speak about yes. the book and what, what they can get from the book? Yes, it's called The Concise Guide to Mastering the Medical School Interview. Um, since I've been on so many um, interviews, I've kind of had every kind of uh, question um, presented to me, and also through applying for jobs like in medicine as well as in law, um, I've kind of got that, that history as well. And then when I was in med school, also I was on the medical school um, admissions team for um, uh, incoming med students as well. So I've all, I've, I've kind of uh, taken my experience from both sides and wrote a book about it. Um, the book gives you tips on um, pretty much everything from the beginning to the end, from the application process um, to the interview day, what to wear, what not to wear. Um, it has hundreds and hundreds of practice interview questions from just the standard stuff 
to the um, to the um, how to handle inappropriate questions that you might be asked. Um, for example, um, when I was on one particular med school interview, the physician said, um, um, "Aren't we wasting our time giving you a spot in this class? You're just gonna have you finished med school. You're just gonna get married, have babies, and not gonna work full time anymore." Yeah. So aren't we you know, wasting our time? So it was, yeah. I kind of gave a couple of uh, inappropriate questions and how to handle them diplomatically, but still, you know, show your point of view and um, how, to, how to master the interview and, and go in there confidently and give you the tools you need so you can do well. Because the interview is a huge process of the application process. Once you get to that point, they know you can do the work there. Then they just need to see if you fit into their particular culture of their, their med school. Gotcha. And in terms of the uh, books that are available and the, um, the product line that you have with Fit and Find in no time, where can people uh, find those items? They can go to my website, um, www.drreginamdjd.com or um, Fit and Find in no time, uh, net. Okay, awesome. Uh, Dr. Bailey, thank you so much for uh, joining me tonight. Uh, thank you so much for helping me, Dr. having Bailey, me. He was an uh, ER physician, lawyer, author, fitness expert. I'm just reading from a list. You have so many things and accomplishments. <laughs> Uh, medical director, former cheerleader, mother, uh, thank you so much for just being an inspiration to all of us uh, out here, especially even myself. Uh, we really appreciate it. And it, it's really inspiring to see someone such accomplished, uh, who has accomplished so much in their life, uh, just come from, uh, you know, a beginning such that, that you mentioned. Uh, so I just wanted to thank you for that. And uh, thank you for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks again for having me. No worries. And everyone else out there, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, new videos come in every uh, week, so you don't want to miss these videos. We'll see you next time.